Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories you're tracking for you on Wednesday, the 13th of April. Rising temperatures give tough time to people in India. Pakistanis struggle with rising inflation during Ramadan. And Sri Lanka PM offers protesters talks as opposition eyes no confidence vote. And now for all the details, soaring temperatures are giving residents in parts of northern and eastern India a tough time already as sweltering heat wave conditions are expected to intensify in the coming days. People are consuming juices, fruits and ice cream as they try to beat the rising mercury levels. People in parts of India reeled under scorching heat on Wednesday with the mercury hovering around 37 to 41 degrees Celsius in some areas. Residents in eastern Patna city sipped on juices to keep themselves hydrated and ate ice cream at roadside stalls to find some respite from high temperatures. The Indian summer starts early in April and continues till late June when the monsoon showers usher a sort of respite in July. Meanwhile, people in Indian capital New Delhi were also seen taking precautions to protect themselves from the blistering heat. Some wrapped scarves around their heads and faces as they stepped out. New Delhi recorded the highest temperature in 72 years in the first half of the month of April, India's weather office said on Tuesday. 40 degrees. Yes, so hot. And uh, now the, my skin uh, maybe is burned. Summers in India are a difficult time when soaring temperatures lead to numerous casualties. Possible reasons for the rising temperatures range from global warming to greater urbanization, leading to taller buildings and diminishing green cover. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday held discussions with U.S. Commerce Secretary Jinnah Raimondo and Trade Representative Catherine Thai for accelerating the economic partnership between India and the United States. He said that the goal of both countries is to enhance the resilience and reliability of supply chains and enhance trust and transparency in business. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Tuesday held discussions with U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo and Trade Representative Catherine Tai in Washington for accelerating economic partnership between India and the United States. Taking to Twitter, J. Shankar said that the goal of both countries is to enhance resilience and reliability of supply chains and enhance trust and transparency in business. Later in the day, he also interacted with students of Howard University along with U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. He said that the United States stood out in helping India during the second wave of coronavirus and added that the India-U.S. relationship is making its weight increasingly felt in world affairs. As we contemplate that future, uh, a big part of that a big role in that is going to be played by the relationship between our two countries. And that relationship has undergone a real transformation in the last two decades. Whether it is our strategic and security cooperation or our economic or technology partnerships, it is making its weight increasingly felt in world affairs. Jay Shankar also underscored that the formation of a working group on education and skill development agreed during the crucial 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue earlier this week will further enhance opportunities for India-US cooperation. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister's office has said that the new government wishes to constructively and positively engage with the U.S. to promote shared goals of peace, security and development in the region after years of volatile relationship between the two countries under former Premier Imran Khan's rule. Pakistan Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif's office has said the new government wishes to constructively and positively engage with the United States to promote shared goals of peace, security and development in the region. 
The statement added that Pakistan looks forward to deepening its important relationship with the U.S. based on the principles of equality, mutual interest and mutual benefit. The statement from Prime Minister's office came in response to the White House statement on the charge of guards in Pakistan. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had earlier said that a democratic Pakistan was critical to U.S. interests. Shahwaj was sworn in as the Prime Minister on Monday following the successful ouster of Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf Chairman Imran Khan through a no-confidence motion, making him the first Premier to be ousted through the democratic process. Ties between Washington and Islamabad touched a new low after former Prime Minister Imran Khan accused the U.S. of conspiring to dislodge his government, the allegation denied by Washington. Meanwhile, in response to a congratulatory tweet by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday, Sharif called for securing peace and focusing on socio-economic development of the people. He, however, emphasized that peaceful settlement of outstanding disputes, including Jammu and Kashmir, is indispensable. Sharif, the younger brother of former three-time Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, in his inaugural speech on Monday said he wanted good relations with India, but it cannot be achieved without the resolution of the Kashmir issue. Ties between the two arch-rivals deteriorated after New Delhi announced withdrawing the special powers of erstwhile Jammu and Kashmir state and bifurcating it into two union territories in 2019. This move outraged Pakistan, leading to downgrading of diplomatic ties. India has long accused Pakistan of aiding and infiltrating terrorists from across the border to foment violence in the region. Pakistan, however, denies the charges. And more on news from Pakistan. As Muslims across the world are celebrating Ramadan, residents in Pakistan's Karachi city are dreading about the hike in prices of food items during the Islamic holy month. Ramadan may be a month of fasting, but for many Muslims, it also involves a gastronomical feast. As Muslims across the world are undergoing rigorous fasting during the holy month of Ramadan, locals in Pakistan's Karachi city are dreading about spiraling food prices, which have made life difficult for the poor and middle class alike. Ramadan may be a month of fasting, but for many Muslims, it also involves a gastronomical feast. They said the prices should be anyway less in the Muslim-majority country and demanded the government should provide relief to people who are already facing difficulties due to the ongoing economic crisis. Meanwhile, newly elected Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif on Tuesday decided to form the National Economic Council to be comprised of independent financial experts and issue directives for formulating financial proposals on an emergency basis, his office said. Former Finance Minister and PMLN leader Mifta Ismail on Tuesday said that Pakistan's deficit stood at Rs 5,600 billion as he slammed the ousted PTI-led government for pushing the country towards economic turmoil. And a gang rape survivor from Pakistan-administered Kashmir has made an emotional appeal to Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for shelter and protection. In a video message, she said she has been running from pillar to post to seek punishment for those involved in the heinous crime in 2015. But to her dismay, she has only got a humiliating response. She added her family faces a threat to their life. Many rape survivors and their families in Pakistan-administered Kashmir are afraid to come forward to publicly confront perpetrators because they fear being shunned by their community. मुझे जो है पाकिस्तान के जरिए इंतजामिया जम्मू कश्मीर की पुलिस ने यहाँ की गवर्नमेंट्स ने और यहाँ की अदालतों ने इंसाफ फ्राम नहीं किया तो इसलिए जो है मैं आज अपने इस वीडियो पैगाम में प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया मोदी जी से ये अपील करना चाहती हूँ कि वो हमें हमारी रियासत में आने की इजाज़त दें मेरे बच्चों की जानों को खतरा है 
And Sri Lanka's Prime Minister offered talks on Wednesday with protesters calling for the government to step down over its handling of an economic crisis as the opposition threatened to bring a no-confidence motion against it in the parliament. The root of the crisis lies in mismanagement of public finances that critics say has been exasperated by tax cuts enacted by the government just before the COVID-19 pandemic. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa offered talks on Wednesday with protesters calling for the government to step down over its handling of an economic crisis as the opposition threatened to bring a no-confidence motion against it in Parliament. In a Twitter post, Mahinda Rajpaksa said, I am willing and prepared to meet with citizens currently engaged in the protest at the Gale phase to hear their thoughts and complaints. I invite them to meet and discuss any possible plausible courses of action for the sake of Lanka. The island nation of 22 million people is in the throes of its worst financial crisis since independence in 1948, with a foreign currency shortage, stalling imports of fuel and medicines and bringing hours of power cuts a day. Thousands of people have taken to the streets, many staging a sit-in in the commercial capital Colombo to denounce the government led by President Gotabaya Rajpaksa and his elder brother, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajpaksa. Some of the protesters at the tent encampment which has been growing over recent days with food stalls, medical facilities and four charging stations said this week they would only leave if the Rajpaksa stepped down. Sri Lanka is due to begin negotiations with the International Monetary Fund IMF next week for a loan program, after months of delay as the crisis worsened. On Tuesday, the central bank chief said he was suspending foreign debt payments and diverting dwindling foreign reserves to importing essentials. Adding to the uncertainty, the main opposition Samagi Jana Balavegaya Alliance said it would give the President and Prime Minister a week to step down before moving a no-confidence motion in Parliament. The government has said it holds a majority in the 225-member Parliament, which is scheduled to meet next week, despite more than two dozen lawmakers leaving the ruling coalition and declaring themselves independent last week. The roots of the crisis lies in mismanagement of public finances that critics say has been exacerbated by tax cuts enacted by the government just before the COVID-19 pandemic. An eatery in Western India has come up with a unique idea of serving food not by waiters but by toy trains. The train-themed restaurant is attracting people to enjoy their meal by delivering straight to them without any human intervention. In a unique initiative, toy trains in a restaurant in India's western Surat city can be seen passing through the dining tables, serving food to the diners. In the train-themed restaurant Trainian Express, which has attracted a lot of people in the city, the train makes its way straight to the diners from the kitchen, without the need for any human intervention. The various compartments of the train are loaded with bread, gravies and other food items. The dining tables in the eatery are also named after different stations of Surat City, giving the guests a full railway station vibe. Owner Mukesh Chaudhary said the train concept in the restaurant is being liked by the customers. Sir, अपना यहाँ पे जो है जो train का concept है वो train का जो out of से लेके आए हम Surat में यहाँ पे यहाँ पे बहुत लोगों को पसंद है इसीलिए train के train के हमने अलग-अलग नाम भी दे रखे हैं station के वराचा परोत पार्टिया ring road अराजन अल्थान Many customers said this unique concept has given them a chance to tell their children about the long train journeys they took as a child. और कई जगह रेस्टोरेंट पर गए हैं, लेकिन वहाँ वेटर के जरिए खाना सर्व होता है। इस इस रेस्टोरेंट में ट्रेन के जरिए खाना सर्व होता है। वो बात हम हम लोगों को अच्छी लगी। और ट्रेन तो सबने देखी होगी, बैठे होंगे, लेकिन ये खाने का वो ये तरीका वो बहुत अच्छा लगा, मेरे को भी अच्छा लगा और मेरी बच्ची को भी, पूरा नहीं यादें ताजा हो गए। In the post-COVID era, restaurants and eateries across the country are trying their best to entice customers with new and innovative things to look forward to. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow.
सब्सक्राइब टैग टीवी यूट्यूब चैनल एंड प्रेस द नोटिफिकेशन बटन